Catch it up for Crust Pizza on Shelby Drive in Jonesboro. We're live with John Brady all across the EAB Red Wolf Sports Network on this Monday night, getting ready for a huge oh, yeah. final week of the regular season. I want to mention, uh, if you're out here at Upper Crust tonight, we want you to come <coughs> up to the front. You can sign up for the Arkansas College <coughs> Savings Plan. It's the Shoot for College Sweepstakes and earn a chance to shoot for $10,000. Just uh, enter your name here at the front at Upper Crust tonight. You'll have a chance to do that. Also, fill out a question card. When, when do you shoot it? When do you, when uh, do you get a chance to we shoot We got it? our guys from Sports Properties here. We'll try to get a uh, final answer on that. But, well, I may uh, sign up. Ten grand. Yeah, I can, I can shot. still shoot a little bit. I don't know if you're eligible. but Oh, well, that's what I was saying. Well, when do they shoot? During the game? Maybe or? Mike Scutero will get up. He can't sign shoot. Up. Now, I don't know where it's from either. It could be a free throw. It could be a three-point shot. It could be a half-court shot. Well, you, before you start talking about this stuff, you should probably know a little more about uh, I just told about it a few minutes before we went oh. on. That, that's all I know. Okay. All right, sign up. Sorry I asked. I don't, I don't care where it's from. I'm going to shoot it if it's for $10,000. That's right. That's what I'm saying. Uh, we do have uh, a lot on the line for your basketball team uh, this week. Uh, the scenario – Pretty simple, you know, you win two, you're in the Sun Belt Tournament, you win one, you're going to need some help, but a couple of big games coming up Thursday against South Alabama, and then the uh, season finale Saturday against Louisiana Lafayette. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it, it, it's an important, we, we thought these home games at the end would be important, and they are, maybe not for all the reasons that we would have liked, but they, they certainly are important, uh, and, and they, they've taken their own uh, circumstance and uh, you know it's important for our team to, to win the game Thursday uh, we, 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 we need to do it uh, you know we just got to do it that's where we are our team knows it and, and, and uh, you know our fans realize it and, and uh, hopefully they'll come out and help our team I mean you know it's, it's about the players it's about giving the team and the players the best opportunity they have to play their best uh, one of them is you you, you you encourage them, you coach them, you teach them. Uh, you try to watch tape and prepare them for what the other team's supposed to do or can do, and you do things to counter that, and you do that in the practice. So the, the coaches provide a certain type of environment and atmosphere for the players to have success, as do the fans. Uh, regardless of what has happened to this point, whether you like it or don't like it, what you need to do is support the players one of the ways the fans can do that is come out Thursday night and give them the best chance they have to, to win that game uh, and then come back and do it again Saturday. Uh, you know, I know the players appreciate it, and, and uh, certainly our team would. And, and uh, I thought it was a good vocal crowd the other night against Texas Arlington. I mean, we had a great crowd. Uh, it was a really entertaining game. Our team played extremely well. You know, Arlington goes up uh, the next game and beats Little Rock. So, uh, it was it was a, a good game for us. The last two home games have been great for us, and we need to do it again Thursday night, you know, against a South Alabama team that we did beat on the road in overtime. It was a close game there. And, and uh, you know, South Alabama's fighting a little bit for where they are. And, and uh, you know, they've got two more games. They could lose those. We could win two and, and really pass them or tie for them. And so there's a lot of things we can play for. Uh, but we've got we've to do everything we can Thursday night, play our best, and hopefully uh, get that game at home. Your team did go one and one last week, had the big victory over Texas Arlington on Thursday, 81 to 80 at the Convocation Center. And Anthony Livingston with a career high 31 points in that game, 15 rebounds, had the game winning basket with 15 seconds left. I know you were proud of the offensive board and putback, but just as proud of the way your team got back defensively in those final 15 seconds. Well, you know, the game before that, uh, you know, against Monroe, they scored the tide, and we advanced the ball up quickly and drove yep. it in and got a layup on a retreating defense. And, uh, you know, they didn't call timeout either. Um, and then – but with 15 seconds left, I may have popped a timeout. They were uh, out of timeouts. Oh, is that what they were? I didn't know that. My staff, my crack staff didn't tell me that. <laughs> So, uh, well, that's why they didn't call timeout, and that was a good thing. And so we had them kind of confused there a moment. I thought they didn't know really what they were supposed to do, and they kind of stood around for a little bit, and our team got back defensively, kept the ball in front of them. Uh, we helped when we needed to. 
uh, and made them take a, a off balance shot at the buzzer. And, and uh, that was as important as making the basket. Uh, sometimes you've seen teams score with, you know, several seconds left, and the other team comes down, drives it to the goal, misses, somebody tips it in. Uh, you create all, all kind of problems when you allow dribble penetration. But this particular time, we didn't allow the ball to be penetrated in the core of our defense. We kept it out around the three-point line, kept the ball in front, challenged the shooter, and made them take an off-balance shot, and we were able to secure the rebound and win the game. So both of those sequences were really good for us. You know, Anthony Livingston's offensive rebound, you know, he came from about 16 or 18 feet from the rim, and the ball was shot. Fred Dewar took a pretty good shot, actually. Yeah. Uh, and it came off the rim, and Anthony got it and put it back in. So uh, it was a, a good way to end it. Um, you know, and Anthony Livingston, we were talking about it earlier. He's got 14 or 15 double-doubles, and the, the school record is maybe 15, as far as we can tell. He's got 14 double-doubles. Now, uh, this is big because the last person to have that many double-doubles was Dan Henderson in 1975. Anthony's 14 double-doubles are the most in 40 years at Arkansas State. And... Well, Mark Taylor, our, our sports information director, has been digging hard to try to find out these double-double stats from before 1975 because they're hard to track down. But uh, Dan Henderson had at least 15 and 75. But it, it tells you just how big of a record that is that Anthony is the first to do that in 40 years. Well, it, 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 and he's a sophomore. So, uh, you know, he, he's, a, he's a part of, of, of getting better and, and, and improving the team for next year. And I think – you know, all of these guys, the 10 guys that we have that were new this year will come back, uh, most of them anyway, I'm sure, and, and uh, the team will improve based on a year of playing together and learning one another. And, and uh, you know, we've got, we've got a number of players back, uh, key players back, so uh, they'll be better with what they've gone through by the experience they've had and, and certainly uh, want to be better. Uh, but we've got, we've got two games left here that we can get where we want to go. Our team is good enough. Uh, you know, Monroe's the best team in the league, supposedly. We beat them at home. Arlington's the third or fourth best team in the league. We beat them at home. Uh, certainly we didn't play well the other night, as I would have liked at Texas State. Uh, we, we missed some really easy shots early. We missed four or five around the goal early in that game. Uh, we, had three of, we had seven or eight careless turnovers the first ten minutes. We settled down after that a little bit, but we were trying too hard. We just... We were trying to make it all happen too quick and, and uh, didn't rely on each other. and We weren't patient enough offensively. And we were trying to do it all at one time. And we got ourselves into some trouble with some, some careless turnovers and then forcing, well, rushed some shots. I, I wouldn't say they were forced, but we did miss four or five easy ones around the goal to start the game. And then at the end, our press worked really good. We turned them over 10 times the second half, and uh, we weren't able to convert but two of those 10 turnovers in transition. So uh, e even though we didn't start the game as well, the effort we had was good enough to win it. We just weren't able to make the plays necessary, and, and uh, we, we were kind of rushed ourselves a little bit early on. But uh, that being said, uh, it's still on us. We know what we have to do. Uh, there's an opportunity there for us to, to, to finish this thing the way we want to finish it. And we'll see how we do Thursday night. We had a good spirited practice today. We, in spite of what we've gone through, uh, I, I think our practice today was quite competitive. Uh, I know Cameron Golden's here tonight. He had a really good practice today. He was, he's really focused. Cam sent me a text last night and uh, says, Coach, uh, something to the effect, we're not going to give up on this thing. We know we can do it. Uh, we want to finish with a Cinderella end. Let's get this done. I mean, so the, 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 the attitude of our team is fine. We watched tape today before we came on the floor. We know, we know what we didn't do against Texas State. We know what we did do against Monroe and, and Arlington. And we need to think back and reflect on that and, and put that into our game Thursday night for 40 minutes and see what happens against, you know, against South Alabama here. Denise Bowman is here from Jonesboro, and we were talking about Anthony Livingston just a moment ago. She says, Anthony seems to be a complete player. Is there anything he needs to work on to improve his game? Well, the, the thing I've been on, on uh, that I, I talked to him about and, and it is his intensity level uh, from start to finish. Uh, players sometimes with, 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 with a talent level like his have a tendency to coast, and they – and it's come easier for them. Well, 
the more notoriety he gets and the more success he has, other teams aren't going to make it easy for him. And he's got to match the expectation that he's developing for himself by how he's playing. And, and just the intensity of his approach uh, and the detail that he needs to have in order to keep doing what he's doing. Because the more success he has, the more teams are going to be geared towards stopping him. Uh, so he has to match that respect that he's earning uh, by how he prepares himself to play night in and night out. And that's the only thing uh, 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 in his personality. He's not a real aggressive guy. He's kind of a laid back guy. He's a real nice young man. Uh, but sometimes when you step across that, that line, you need to have a playing personality a little different than your off-court personality. And those are some things that I've been talking to him about in order to, to really achieve the level uh, that I think he can get to, uh, you know, with two years left to play, obviously. Denise's husband, Ron, is also here tonight. And Ron had the question, and I think this was a question by a lot of fans who were at the Texas Arlington game. Uh, last Thursday, and he wants to know, can you explain what happened last week when a technical was called against Texas Arlington, but both teams shot free throws, and somehow Texas Arlington ended up with the <coughs> basketball? Well, it is my best recollection in watching the tape. I talked to our commissioner of officials about that. Um, the play was stopped, my understanding, because they called a technical foul on Texas Arlington's guy. Mm -hmm. There was no personal foul administered at that time. Uh, so they go to the monitor to see if the technical foul, if it was a, a flagrant one or two where you raise your elbow above your shoulder and, and do something uh, uncharacteristic to natural movement, whatever they, however they describe that. Well, coming out of the, the monitor, they, they call it a personal foul on Anthony Livingston, say he elbowed the guy. Well, my response was you can't do that. You can't go to the monitor and call a personal foul if you haven't called the personal foul to stop play. Right. You, you, it's not right. And I told him that's not right. You, you, you missed the personal foul. If that, they need to go back and do the whole game, and it'd take us two days to play it. <laughs> uh, but... but you, <laughs> You can only review a flagrant foul or the last two minutes of the game, you can go back and review to see who knocked the ball out of bounds, so, something like that. Uh, but you can't. That's not in the real book that you can apply a personal foul after they check You can't do it. You, you can't go and see, well, we missed that personal foul, and we're going to give it to them. So they came out of there. We shot free throws for the technical. They shot free throws for Anthony's personal foul. And with the technical foul, the stoppage of the of, of the of, of, of play should have been started where it was with our rebound and our ball, but yet they gave them the ball. Yeah, it was a it was a bad administered part of the game, and it was wrong. And I told, and he agreed with me. You know, there's nothing we could do. We could have lost the game by one point. You know, how would that feel? Uh, so, it was just a bad judgment and uh i kept telling him i wouldn't let the official talk to me he's saying can i explain i said no you have nothing to explain because you're wrong what you did was wrong you can't go to the monitor and apply a personal file i don't want to hear it i don't want to hear what he's telling me because he's wrong and uh so i imagine now that they've reviewed it they they, they know that they they missed uh that they missed that whole sequence so that's as best as i know what happened now they may have told Somebody else, if they called a personal foul on Anthony Livingston to stop the game, but that's not what happened. No. It was a, 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 a uh, technical foul on the Arlington player, and out of that, somehow Anthony got a personal foul, which is incorrect. You can't do that. All right, we've got more to come coming up on Live with John Brady. When uh, we come back, we're going to be joined by the first of a couple of very special player guests tonight, Cameron Golden, the junior guard out of Memphis, coming up next. now 
here at Upper Crust by a uh, junior guard out of Ridgeway High School in Memphis. Put your hands together for Cameron Gold. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Uh, you know, I guess we'll start with the text that uh, Coach Brady was talking about just uh, a few moments ago. Uh, you sent him a text last night, just kind of explain uh, what you were trying to tell your coach. Uh, yeah, I was just, I sent, a t I sent him a text around, I want to say four or five. He didn't read it until about two hours later. Probably, he's probably asleep, and I was just told him. Now, uh, it's four or five in the morning? No. Nah, like, oh, okay. <laughs> So um, I basically sent them a message, and I was like, um, long as you, uh, long as you're still with us, like, we good. Like, this, this right here is just a test, you know? Like, this is the battle. We need to stick together and, like, just pull out a Cinderella story some type of way. You know, I think uh, everybody in this room would be for that uh, as you head into the final week of the regular season. Just how bad do you want to get back to New Orleans, and uh, this is your next to last year at Arkansas State, so uh, I imagine the fire is, uh, is burning pretty hot right now. Oh, yeah, I'm itching to get back. So these next two games are the uh, biggest games of my life, really. So I'm going to play my hardest and, like, give it my all. Mary Nell Masterson, who I know you got a hug from a little bit earlier. She's from Jonesboro. She says, uh, no question, I just applaud the players, coaches, and staff for fighting through a very tough season this year. Just how tough has it been? Oh, it's this been year? very tough. Like, really one of the toughest seasons I've played basketball, period. Um, with the team we had, we was all new, so we had to get chemistry, and it took us, like, time. So we're still fighting, and we're still, like, you know, just working things out. And, uh, I just wanted to thank all the fans for coming out, even though, like, this season hasn't been the greatest. But I appreciate everybody. You know, and Coach Brady has – has talked about it too, especially the last couple of home games, the wins against Louisiana Monroe and Texas Arlington. The crowds ha have played a very big factor in those two games. Oh, yeah, the crowd has played a very big factor. They like the next player on the court, basically. When we're on defense, they're loud, so the players really can't run their plays as well as they are uh, to their best ability. So, and they just keep us calm on offense, like they're just cheering us on, and it is a great feeling to know that you got somebody still supporting you. I want to rewind a few years and, and go back to, to Ridgeway and, and just you being recruited. Now, I know Arkansas State wasn't the only school that was after you. Talk about your story and how you ended up at Arkansas State. Oh, uh, yeah. I um, originally committed to UAB, but the coach had got fired, and I just didn't, you know, I didn't feel comfortable anymore. And I always talked to Coach Brady and Coach Money every day. Like, they called me every day, and we got a bond with each other. And I was like, you know what? This is the school that I want to play for and the coaches. You know, it's, uh, it, it's been an interesting ride for you. Uh, you kind of were in that role player position your first two years at Arkansas State, even though you started about half the games uh, in your freshman and sophomore years. Talk about you know, trying to take on a little bit more responsibility this year. Um, yeah, really. Well, it's all about timing. You got to time yourself. You can't just, you know, uh, you can't just force things, you know, you got to let it happen, like let it come to you. Like I had to learn that this year actually, taking on a bigger role than I took the previous two years. Uh, Marlita Stewart is here, and uh, now you played both of these positions. She wants to know, would you rather play point or the two, and why? Um, Do you have a preference? No, nah, I just I really don't have a preference. I mean, wherever I'm on the court, if the coach tells me to play the position, I'm going to play it to my best abilities. So... Whichever one, it really don't matter. You know, Cam is top 10 in the conference this year in scoring at 14 points a game. He's also uh, top 10 in the league in steals, three-pointers made, and uh, you're top five in the conference this year in minutes played. Talk about, uh, the, I guess, the kind of uh, conditioning that uh, this season has been, just not only you're your on the court time, but getting ready to be on the court as much as you are. Oh, yeah, it's a, a constant conditioning season, period. Like, whether it's in practice, walking to class, running to class, um, just running miles with KD at night, you know, just doing things like that to keep us, keep, our, keep us windy. I mean, keep us from being windy. Now, are you really running to class? Yeah, like sometimes it'd be too cold, so I have to <laughs> run. <laughs> Talk about uh, the last couple of weeks. Obviously, there, there's been some, some big positives the last couple of weeks with the victories over Louisiana Monroe and Texas Arlington and uh, the, the turnovers and the, the uh, slow start Saturday against Texas State. 
uh, withstanding, you guys were able to do some pretty good things in that ball game. Talk about the way this team has kind of gelled uh, over the last two weeks or so. Well, I can honestly say the two wins that we played, um, it wasn't the same as the one at Texas State. We, we kind of went away from the game plan, and it, you could tell, like, in the first five minutes. And, like, once you get – basically, once you get started so slow, it's, like, kind of hard. I'm not going to say it's too hard. It's hard to get back, you know, especially on the road. So, we need to just go back to what we was doing, really listening to coach, basically. Talking with Ace Day guard Cameron Golden uh, here at Upper Crust Pizza in Jonesboro tonight. Let's talk about the week ahead. Um, as you get ready to take on South Alabama, this is a team that you did beat in overtime. Uh, that was way back in late December. That was the very first game of conference play. Uh, what are you concerned about? What, what are you getting ready for when you face the Jaguars on Thursday night? Um, a very competitive team. I know that was both of, uh, both of our first conference games, so I'm pretty sure both of us got better. Well, I don't know about them, but, uh, but I know we have. So <laughs> I know we started in practice today. We went – we went at it tough, like, so we got to just continue to compete in practice and carry that on into the game. And then Louisiana Lafayette on Saturday. I know that was a game that, uh, that stung a few weeks ago when you went to the Cajun Dome. Uh, how much are you itching to have another chance at those guys? I think that one is a little personal, you know, like, because of the loss and the amount of points we lost by, it was, it was basically embarrassing. So we are really looking forward to playing them as well. You know, it's, uh, it's been fun watching you the last few years. And uh, obviously, you know, I know you still have another he year here at Arkansas State. Talk about your plans after Arkansas State. What's your major and what do you want to do after basketball? Yeah, okay. My major is in disciplinary studies. Um, it's in three fields of business, physical education, and uh, uh, what was the other one? I'm sorry about this. But now, this is your major, Cam. Yeah, I know. But it was, I had to pick three. Okay. And so the third one was really like, yeah. Interdisciplinary But, I, but this studies. is what I plan on doing, though, actually. I like, I like to talk a lot, so, and I like to work on computers and do a lot of things, technolo uh, technology. So basically try to, like, find somewhere in the field of computers. All right. Hidden secret. Cam, we appreciate you coming out tonight. Enjoy Thanks for having me. All right. That's a State guard Cameron Golden joining us here at Upper Crust Pizza in Jonesboro. When we come back, we'll be joined by another junior on the Ace Today roster, the 6'9 junior out of Arlington, Texas. Kelvin Downs is coming up next. Red Wolves basketball will continue in a moment.
And we welcome you back to Upper Crust Pizza on Shelby Drive in Jonesboro. Those were the final seconds of the big win against Texas Arlington back on Thursday night. And uh, speaking of Arlington, Texas, we are joined by Arlington, Texas native. Went to Seguin High School in yes, Arlington. It's uh, 6'9 junior Kelvin Downs. How you doing, KD? Fantastic, man. How you doing tonight? Man, doing great. Uh, how was it beating your hometown team the other night? It was fantastic because the first time we played them, they embarrassed me in front of my family and my girl. So, you know what I'm saying? I feel kind of played a little bit. <laughs> yeah, and you had uh, you had a very big pass list. Uh, you filled uh, how many names out, 30 or 40, when we went to Arlington? It was around that number. I'm not sure, but it could have right. been 200. But, you know, some people shaked on me, didn't want to show up. So, well, it'd be like that sometimes. Uh, obviously, it's great to get them back. A, a thrilling win and uh, – uh, fun to, to win in front of the home fans. And Cam talked about it uh, a little bit earlier. The, the, the crowd was a big part of, uh, of the course, last couple Of course, always. Wins. Always, man. The crowd always plays a big part in the wins and the losses, but it's better when they play a part in the wins. Uh, we've got some questions just for Kelvin tonight uh, here at Upper Crust. Carrie Brown is here. She's uh, from Jonesboro. She wants to know, Kelvin, what do you want to do after college and what is your major? Asked the same questions to Cam just a minute ago. Well, see, I've been playing on that a lot lately. Uh, my major is in disciplinary studies, but I'm changing it to sports management during the summer, so I want to do something within that field. Okay. I haven't planned it out exactly yet, so cross that bridge when I get there. All right, well, you're on the right track. Uh, Ken Stewart's here. He's uh, from J-Town, and... Uh, he's got a question that uh, I know that uh, you'll be happy to give the answer to, but uh, what happened to, quote, turn your light on during the past few games? What's been the difference for you personally? I've just been focused, man. I'm trying to get to New Orleans. Uh, I don't like losing. And Coach Brady told me my attitude helped me change. So, well, the changing of my attitude helped me play better. So, I guess that's the answer. My attitude changed. Now, you kind of got a battle scar. Yeah. You, uh, you kind of got a battle scar above uh, your eye the other night at Texas Tech. Yeah. The dude elbowed me. I thought it was a flagrant foul, but the refs didn't call anything. So, everything happens for a reason. I guess it's meant to make me tougher. Well, you might have a cool scar out of it. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's see. Talking with Kelvin Downs out here at Upper Crust. Uh, you had one of the bigger highlights of the year in that uh, Louisiana Monroe game. Sean Gardner uh, missed a, a little runner in the lane, and you come out of nowhere with the offensive board and the stuff. Uh, where is that rank as far as your favorite plays in your career? Collegially or just period? Uh, just period or collegially, well, both, whatever. Collegially is, is definitely number two. But it's number one. I can't even fake it. It's my favorite play. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was definitely number one. Uh, I just followed the ball. Coach Scoot always tell me crash the offensive glasses, no matter what. So I saw Sean miss the ball short, and I took my opportunity to finish it. So I had to get the crowd what they wanted to see. <laughs> well, it, it certainly energized the crowd and got everybody on their feet at the time. Uh, yeah, you know, one thing that uh, we want to talk about, too, we talked about Cam's story. You came in uh, out of high school just like he did. And uh, talk about how you were recruited, uh, who recruited you, number one, and uh, what made you choose Arkansas State? Well, Louisiana Tech and Arkansas State was really my only two offers my, before my senior year in high school. So I went on my visit to La Tech, and I, I really didn't like it that much. So when I came on my visit here, I feel comfortable. I like the players they had originally before I came. And I came with a dude named Chris Brown. He was on my visit too. So we both were from Texas. So that bond helped me come as well. And the players that Coach Brady had coached, like Big Baby and some other guys on the Brandon Bass and that list of big guys, you know what I'm saying? That played a big part as well. Yeah, yeah. If you're a big guy and Coach Brady has coached those kind of guys, I'm sure that's a heck of a recruiting pitch for you. Of course. Uh, talking with Kelvin Downs, uh, we'll talk about this week. Obviously, you got the two big home games as you try to get uh, your ticket punch for New Orleans. But, uh, again, this is a South Alabama team that you went to overtime with uh, on Thursday. And right now, I know that's where your focus is. Yes. Um, 
we just gotta get the win. Like I just want to win, so play hard, play strong, play tough. It's gonna be a, a, a great team win when we get it. And Cam said the Lafayette game on Saturday is is personal. Of course, they they killed us the first time, so we got something in store for them. Don't worry about it. No, nah, we're not gonna worry about it. We'll we'll see uh, Kelvin and the Red Wolves and. Uh, I know he wants to see you at the Convocation Center Thursday against South Al and then Saturday against Louisiana Lafayette. Thanks for coming out tonight. Thanks for having me, man. All right, that's A-State Junior Kelvin Downs entertaining us tonight out here at Upper Crust Pizza in Jonesboro. When we come back, we'll have the final 10 minutes of the program with John Brady. up here at Upper Crust Pizza in Jonesboro. We're live with John Brady on this Monday night. Want to remind you, uh, double header action coming your way <coughs> on Thursday against South Alabama. The A-State women playing at 5 o'clock in the first game of the double header. Uh, we need you there. If you can't make it out, you can hear it in Northeast Arkansas at 95.3. The ticket, the men play at 7.30 right here on the EAB Red Bull Sports Network. Then the regular season finale Saturday against Louisiana Lafayette, the women at 3.05, the men at 7.05 against the Raging we just We hope the weather holds off Thursday night. Man, I hope so. They say forecast. something, no, something might be great. coming in here, but I hope, it, hope it's okay. Uh, well, I was glad the players came down. You know, we've had – this year we've had several – had the coaches in, and then we've had uh, almost all of the players that have played some significant minutes in here mm -hmm. to talk. And uh, – I thought Kelvin and uh, Cam did a good job tonight, and did a very good job. And they good guys. They uh, and and you know people get to hear them a little bit and let them talk, and they see their personality. And and I think the six man club the other night before the uh, uh, UT Arlington or Monroe game, I can't remember which one it was. I brought Cam and and Nam and uh, and uh, Anthony Livingston in to speak to the six man club before the game, and they did a nice job. And and you know it's let the let the people see. You know, don't stereotype them. If they're all individuals, they're all different. They all have their different personalities. And uh, I'm glad, you know, people got to see them two tonight. And I thought they did a great job. Yeah. Uh, Joe Clements is here from Jonesboro. Joe wants to know, Coach, what is your biggest concern about South Alabama? Well, I was asked that today by uh, some TV guy. Uh, and I'm, I respect South Alabama, and I'm concerned about a couple of their players. They've got good guards. They've got one forward who's, who, who had a good game against us down there who's played consistently pretty well this year. But their two guards are really good. They score baskets. Uh, but I'm really concerned about how we play, our approach, and how we, we start the game and, 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 and how we execute, uh, really be precise and specific with what we do. Uh, that's what I'm most concerned about is, is our team and, and, and if we play like we're capable of playing. Uh, and we've struggled with that this year a little bit, um, not playing as well as I think we are. Um, um, and, and from a maturity standpoint, whatever the case may be, new players, whatever that is, we haven't grown together uh, as it relates to, I think, individually, the, the, how talented we are. Or, or I'm not saying we're the most talented team in the league, but certainly uh, we haven't come to together as a group as we need to have uh, at this point. And when we do play together and we play unselfish, we share the ball a little bit, uh, we're able to beat anybody in the league. I believe that. Uh, but there are moments where we lose that. And, you know, Cam alluded to it a little bit, uh, you know, got off track there on the road the other night. And, uh you know, he alluded to that and what he talked about. And that's been our issue all year long, whether it's immaturity or leadership or, or, or better playing or, or better coaching, whatever those combinations are, we haven't found it on a consistent basis. 
but I, I like our players. I've said that from the beginning. I like what they're about. Uh, we just haven't reached that maturity level and that, that, that place that teams need. You know, some of the things, uh, even today, you know, some the same things I was coaching in November. We haven't really progressed as much as I would have liked in terms of the detail and how we do it. Uh, and and, and th that's on us as coaches and players to get to that point. But at times we're pretty good with it, and, and uh, we just hadn't hit that point with this team yet. But, uh, you know, we've got something to play for. Uh, you know, South Alabama is playing for something too, and so is Lafayette. Not, it's not like they don't. But, you know, our backs are against the wall. The best thing is is we're at home. And, and it's like I said before, Let's do everything we can to give our players the best chance to win that game Thursday night. From a support standpoint, uh, positive uh, feedback standpoint, as the coaches are going to do the same thing. Uh, and let's, let's make the best environment for our players to play the best they possibly can because uh, that's really what it's all about, and that's what we're trying to do. And then I think it was interesting, the, the comments by both Cam and Kelvin uh, about the Lafayette game on Saturday. Each of those guys said that, uh, that game's going to be very personal for them. Well, it is, but I'm not concerned about that game as much as I am Thursday. Thursday's a, the ticket we got to punch. And, uh, you know, the Saturday game will still be meaningful if Texas State loses Thursday night. But, uh, you know, we, we've got to take care of our own own situation. And, you know, the Lafayette game was a, was a fiasco for us there. But we've had a couple of those this year that are uncharacteristic of who we are. And, and we, we, got them, we got Arlington back with it because we didn't, we didn't play well there the first half. And then same thing at Lafayette. And hopefully we can get them back too. And we, we're capable of doing that. But Thursday night's our ticket. We need to punch and do everything we can to make that happen. And we talked about this at the beginning of the show. Paul Guarigli is here from Jonesboro. And yeah, I think a lot of the people want to know the scenarios to make the Sun Belt Conference Tournament. I know... Uh, you've looked at it a lot of folks. I really hadn't. I really don't know all the scenarios and don't want to get caught up in that. I, my, my deal is let's win two games and we're in. It doesn't matter what anybody else does. So, you know, that's what my focus is on, taking care of business 30, Thursday night. And then if we need to win it Saturday. If, if Texas State wins, we need to win again. Uh, you know, so that's all I'm worried about. I hadn't gone through all the scenarios. Yeah. I, don't, I don't do that. I, I'm worried about what our team does. Thursday night and do everything we can as coaches, hopefully as, as fans, to give them the best environment and, and support them in a way that helps them play their best Thursday night because we certainly need to do that. And it's cliche saying one game at a time, but it's absolutely true because you, you certainly can't look ahead to Saturday and that well, the, the, the anxiety that that creates isn't worth it. I mean, you, you, can't, you can't have a team play its best when they have a high level of anxiety. You've got to You've got to let them know they can win the game provided we do this. We concentrate on that particular game, and that's it. That's why I don't ever think the, the previous game has anything to do with the next game. Uh, and who you're playing after that has nothing to do with it. You need to prepare for every game like it's a, a season within itself. And that's where your focus needs to be, regardless of what happened prior to. You know, you, you, I've seen teams lose 10 in a row and beat the best team in the country. I've seen teams win eight in a row and lose to the worst team. It's all about preparing for that particular game regardless of what happened prior to it. That's the way to do it on a consistent basis because if you, you, if you allow a team to have anxiety creep into it, uh, that right there will stifle your performance at critical moments. You don't need to be that way. So we're going to do everything to let our team know if we do this and that, we can beat this team. Uh, they're going to believe they can beat this team and hopefully uh, you know, we'll play our best. We'll see what happens. John Masterson is here from Jonesboro and Earl. He says that, uh, or he wants to know, is there a Sun Belt team or teams that you feel are uh, improving, playing their best over the past couple of weeks? You know, I don't really know. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't really look at it like that. It's all about who we're playing now. Uh, but I think the best job of coaching this year has been done by Keith Richard at Monroe. Uh, you know, they've gone from eighth or ninth to first. And, uh, I've said that all along. It's not like we're off the chart. I mean, you can go, you can make that jump in the Sun Belt, and, and we get a player or two with what we have coming back, you know, we can make the jump too. I don't think there's any question about that. Nobody would have thought Monroe could make that jump. You know, it's not like you're at Mississippi State trying to overtake Kentucky. That's a yep. big, that's a huge jump. 
uh, the jump from where we are to where we, we want to be isn't, isn't, isn't that big a step. So, uh, you know, so I, I, don't, I don't know who's playing better. All I'm concerned is is how we play and how we prepare ourselves to play Thursday night against South Alabama. And again, we need some big, loud convocation center crowds coming up Thursday, 7.30 tip against South Alabama, and then a 7.05 tip time Saturday against Louisiana Lafayette for the final two games of the season. The three names. Uh, also, uh, if you're at Upper Crust tonight, you can still sign up for the Arkansas College Savings Plan. Shoot for college sweepstakes. Earn a chance to shoot for $10,000. It may be a layup. It may be a half-court shot. We don't know, but need to get you, you need to get organized, Matt. <laughs> Ken Stewart, Paul Guariglia, and Kerry Brown. All winners tonight oh, from yeah. Textbook Brokers Big in talk. Jonesboro. We, uh, talk to me, baby. We appreciate uh, everybody coming out tonight here at Upper Crust.